Gonna stay OEE. Welcome to the Candlelit Tales podcast, episode 154, the story of Freak. Freak is in the Goddess series because he was adored by all the goddesses and he was so beautiful that they would open the she moons and let him in to cuddle him and soften him after the hardship of the real world. It'll be told by my sister, but first, we have to tell you we're very, very excited. Things are getting back to live performances. We just had an amazing show in Arbor Bar and we're scheduling some live shows. We have some things that we've been planning for a couple of years and they're now coming to fruition. We're super excited about the 8th of March to celebrate our feast, a big feast in the Tin Roof in Bray. And please come along and check that out. Tickets are going to be released very soon. They'll fly out the door. Make sure you get them if you're in and around the locale. It'll be a feast followed by stories and music galore. Now we also have some other live gigs coming up but keep an eye on our Instagram or Facebook for details, our website and if you want to get on to us candlelittales.ie If you want to support this podcast or our endeavours to create mythology and more accessibility for all go to patreon.com for slash candlelittales and if you want to listen to a story well, you know what? We're going to be not only sharing stories we're thinking about and this is where you have to let us know if you'd like our post-show podcast to go on tour across venues in Dublin Wicklow we've got a couple of uh, interested parties and we're testing it out so if you'd like us to take our podcast on tour let us know and we'll be doing more live shows as we go on so get in touch let us know any requests we're beginning a new series next month we don't know what that is yet because you haven't told us so let us know get in contact follow us on YouTube subscribe or do whatever you do to spread these stories and without further ado I promise you we're going to listen to Sorica telling a gorgeous story and less of me talking so Sorica tell us this lovely story will you Freyag was the son of the mortal king Iada and the immortal goddess Bavin, sister of Boan, the goddess of the river. And Freyag was a beautiful child, doted on by his mother and his aunt, and not only by them, but by all the women of the she. Fifty of them in particular came to be his guardians, they cooed over the little boy, played with him, praised him, sang to him when he stubbed his toes, gathered him up in warm embraces, passed him from arm to arm, raining kisses on his beautiful face. Because the boy was a beauty. He had a high, wide forehead and a strong, pointed jaw, and big, beautiful, clear eyes. He grew strong and straight, and he became as clever and as quick and as full of confidence as any child would be who was so doted on. And when Freyk grew to manhood, he came into his inheritance a herd of the cattle of the she given to him by his aunt Boan, and there gathered around him a great company of the sons of kings, equally handsome, equally brave, equally strong as he. And Freyk and his companions passed their days in great ease and great sport, in great comfort. And if ever Freyk had any troubles on him, the hills themselves would open up, and his fifty women of the she who loved him so would come, sing him songs about how he was their boy pet, and gather him into the mounds to be cosseted and comforted, until he was ready to face the harshness of the world again. Now there were stories told of his beauty, his bravery, mostly his beauty. And they came to the ears of many women and many men and many who sighed to hear of the beauty of Freyk, of his form and his face and their perfection. And one who heard the stories of Freyk and sighed to picture him was the beautiful daughter of Maeve of Connacht, Fenever. 
She longed to meet him. She felt half in love with him already, never having seen him. But she said nothing of this to anyone. She kept her cards close to her chest. And in Freyak's hall, two storytellers would tell tales of great heroes and beautiful kings and queens and the sons and beautiful daughters of kings and queens. And Freyak always felt his ears perk up when he heard of Finever of the fair eyebrows, the lovely daughter of Maeve and Oliel. And so one day, Freyag decided that he was going to go and pay a visit. He knew the reputation of Maeve and Oliel. He knew how powerful and how prideful they were. So he decided he would go with a hand of friendship extended and not say anything of any designs he might have on their daughter, at least not until he knew them better. And so he gathered his glittering company and he told them that they were going to put their best foot forward and they reined their horses with gold and silver on the bridles, with beautiful stones decorating their chariot rims, and they set forth for Krukon Eye. And there, on the plains outside of Ra Krukon, they erected their beautiful tents. They were covered in silks imported, covered in precious stones so that they gleamed inside all through the night as if it were the brightest day. And Freyak then set out his board of Fitchel and lay back, talking and laughing with his companions and waited for Maeve and Oliel and their household to come out to greet them. Now Maeve and Oliel had seen them coming, of course. They had seen these beautiful company of young men sweeping into their grounds before them, arranging their tents. They'd seen the beautiful hounds they had with them, the incredible horses, incredible wealth that was on display and when they saw the perfect form and features of their leader there was little doubt as to who this could be Freyk beloved of the women of the sheep Freyk the boy pet of they underhill and so Maeve and Olio went to greet him the first thing that caught Maeve's eye was the Fitchel board. She had a great love of the playing of the game, and the one that Freyak had in front of him that he was toying with so idly. It was an incredible board, with beautiful pieces made of precious stones. And Oliel caught her looking and said, you want nothing but to play that game with that boy. And Maeve said, and what if I do? And so she and Freyak sat down and played Fitchel. And it was a great game. It got intense, but never tense. Back and forth they played, sometimes the advantage with one player and sometimes with another. Until, with a clearing of his throat, Oliel pointed out to Maeve that she'd been there longer than she realised. Because of the beauty and the brightness of the tent, she had not noticed the day lengthening. She had not noticed the sun dipping. She had not noticed the full night coming on her. Not just once either, but three times. Maeve and Freyak had been playing Fitchel for three days and three nights. And when she heard this, Maeve was horrified to have left guests in front of her house for three days and three nights unfed and unwatered. It broke every tradition of hospitality she'd ever held dear and she was mortified. So she called on all her servants to prepare a feast with all haste. And the young men were fed and hard feelings put aside. But while Maeve and Oliel were scrambling to get this feast together, Freyk went off on his own. He went to the river where he hoped to meet a young woman who he'd heard liked to walk by the river. And sure enough, before too long, he saw her there. Finever of the fair eyebrows, lovely daughter of Queen Maeve and her consort Oliel. And Finever saw Freyk, and she blushed to the roots of her hair. 
and he put his hand out to her. And she put her hand in his. And the two of them walked by the river a while and talked together. And after a while, Freig told her that he had come to seek her out. He'd come because he wanted to marry her and no other. And he asked her if she would elope with him, if she would run away with him. But Finnever said, no, no, no. I'll not run away with you. If I'm going to marry you, I'm going to marry you proudly before all. And why don't you ask my parents for my hand? They are delighted with you. They think the world of you. I don't know any reason why they would refuse you. And so saying, Finnever took a ring from her finger. My mother gave me this ring, and she told me to put it away and keep it safe. But let you take it now as a token of my regard. And when you've asked my parents for my hand, and when they have said yes, you can give it back to me. And so Freyk took the ring, put it in his bag to keep it safe. And they went on then to the feast at Crocon, going back by separate ways, so that no one would know that they had been walking and talking together. Meanwhile, Maeve and Orlil had been talking, and they had begun to suspect Freyk's real reasons for visiting them. But they knew that they could not allow Freyk and Finnever to marry. Because if Freyk and Finnever married, half of the alliances that Maeve was negotiating ahead of the cattle raid they were planning to take into Coulee, they'd fall apart. Because key part of those negotiations was the promised hand of Finnever in marriage. And so... They could not allow this proposal to go ahead. And so Oriel proposed that they kill Freyk. But Maeve said no, they couldn't do that. It would look bad. It would be a violation of hospitality. And they would look like terrible hosts. And so Oriel thought of a better idea. After the feast, he invited Freyk to go swimming. In a certain pool that he knew of not far from Crocon, and Freyk asked if it was a good place for swimming. What way was the flood? Was the current swift or slow? And Oliel said, oh, it's lovely. It's a, it's a nice black pool. The water is deep and dark and, and cool and refreshing. And a rowan tree grows nearby. And it's a beautiful place for swimming. And so Freyk, Oliel, and some of their followers came down to this particular pool and Freyk took his clothes off and got into the water and Oliel did not. Oliel and the rest of the company waited on the bank while Freyk splashed about in the water and everyone there was struck by the beauty of the scene the dark, dark waters of the pool the sunlight dappling through the leaves of the trees and the contrast and the beauty of Freyk's skin against the dark water. And so they stood and they watched for a while as Freyk swam to and fro, well used to the eyes of others on his form. And while Freyk was swimming, all ill looked in his bag and there he saw a ring he recognised. His daughter's ring. A ring given to her. A ring she had been told to protect and keep safe and give away to no one. And when Oliel saw this, a fury gripped him. He snatched the ring out of the bag and he flung it into the pool. And a salmon swam up from the depths and swallowed it down. And Oliel was satisfied then that the ring was gone forever. But it was not so. Freyk saw him make the toss. He saw the salmon swim up and he saw the salmon swallow the ring. 
and Freyg swam after the salmon. He dove under the water, disappearing from sight of all those on land, and he caught the salmon by the gills and flicked it onto the bank, away from the onlookers, so that the salmon flopped and gasped and drowned in the air, and Freyk splashed and frolicked and drew their attention away. And then Oliel called out to Freyk, Those rowan berries, where the branch overhangs the pool, fetch me some, will you? They look ripe and succulent and delicious. And Freyk obligingly swam for the rowan berries and reached up to break the branch. But they were no ordinary rowan berries. It was no ordinary pool that Oliel had brought Freyk to. Those rowan berries were enchanted and they were guarded by a terrible paste that lived in the water. And when Freyk's hand touched the branch, something in the water moved. He felt it brush against his leg, large, thick slab of coiled muscle, and he recoiled away. He broke the branch and then he saw a shape in the water the water bulging up around it, and then the terrible head of the paste broke. And it lunged for Freyk, quicker than thought. Freyk dove out of the way of the serpent's snapping teeth, but the serpent's slick coils threw themselves around him, started to pull him down under the surfaces of that dark pool, the water now no longer still, but thrashed into a froth by their struggling bodies, and Freyk, getting his head above the water, called out a sword and was dragged under. But Oliel stood on the bank, still a stone, and watched, and did not move. And none there had the courage to go against Oliel. They did not understand his actions, but they hadn't the courage to defy him. And so no one moved. And Freyk and the serpent thrashed. And the water, the white of the foam, began to go red. And still no one moved until one moved. The daughter of Maeve and Oliel, Finever, stepped forward stripped off her dress, grabbed a sword that Freyk had left on the bank and dove into the foam. The second Oliel saw her dive, he threw a spear at his own daughter and that spear parted the hair on her head but did not hit her. It went into the side of the serpent instead and Freyk caught it and pulled it out and he threw it, threw the serpent to the bank where it pinned Oliel's cloak to a tree. And then there was someone else in the water with him. And she passed a sword into his hand. And with the sword, with Finever's aid, Freyk was able to kill the serpent and drag himself out of the black pool. But Freyk was not unblemished not unwounded. The serpent had hurt him. And as happened when Freyk was hurt, the she-mound of Kruokon Eye opened up, and out walked fifty green-clad women of the she, lamenting. And they surrounded Freyk, and they carried him off under the hill to heal him, to make his hurts go away. Oliel and Maeve spoke again. And Maeve said to Oliel, We might need to reconsider this young man's offer. But Oliel was preoccupied with the ring. That ring had been given to Finever, and she had been told to keep it safe and she had not. She had given it away to a young man. And Oliel was determined. He was going to ask Finever to produce that ring at the next feast. And if she did not produce it, she would die. He was 
immovable on this point. He would hear no reason. He would listen to nothing that Maeve could say. He was determined. He was furious. When Freyk returned, he was whole as if nothing had ever happened. But he had not lingered long in the she. He was worried. He had seen everything that Oliel did on the bank of the pool that day. Had seen his rage. Had seen him throw the ring and had seen him throw the spear and had seen exactly who both of those throws were aimed at. He went to one of his men and told him to go to the bank and retrieve the salmon and give it to Finnever, to tell her to prepare it for the feast, to be ready to produce it at a moment's notice. He was terrified for her. He did not know what her father was planning, but he knew that he was planning something. And when evening came and Freya sat at the feasting table with Maeve and with Oliel and with Finnever and with all of his retainers and with all of theirs, there was a tension in the air that was thick and ugly. And Oliel cast glares at his daughter. Then Freyk came clean to Maeve and Oliel. And he said, I am here to court your daughter, Finever, And I would like to know if you will accept my proposal to her. If you will allow me to pay a bride price for your daughter's hand and accept me as your son-in-law. Oliel answered quickly, I will accept you as my son-in-law. And the bride price is the herd of cattle given to you by your aunt Boan. The herd of cattle from the other world. Drive them here to Krokon and stay here. And if you bring them and yourself, and you do not leave, then you can marry our daughter. Now Freyk thought this an unreasonable bride price. He said, I would not pay that for Maeve herself. But name something reasonable, and I will go to the ends of the earth. But Oliel held up a hand and said, No, there's, there is another matter that must be settled. There's something else we have to deal with first. My daughter was entrusted with a ring. She was told to keep it safe, and she did not keep it safe. And I want you, Finnever, now to produce it. Now, or die now. And Finnever went white. She had not the ring. But Freyk told her, bring up the salmon, bring up the salmon that I had given to you. And Finnever brought it to the table and cut it open. And there, inside the salmon, was the ring. And Oliel said, and how came that ring into the hand of Freyk? How did you get it? And Freyk told him, he said, I found the ring. I found it on the ground outside of Crocon and I marked it as a beautiful ring and I thought to myself, whoever lost this ring is going to be looking for it. And so I put it into my bag to keep it safe. And when I was swimming in the pool, I saw you see the ring. I saw you throw it into the water. I saw a salmon swallow it. But I swear to you, I never met that girl before she came to me into the pool, before she gave me the sword. That was our first meeting in the water. When Oliel was given the ring and the explanation for how Freyk had the ring, he felt his anger subsiding. And Maeve stood commanded the attention of the room and said, now I think we've had enough excitement. And Freyk, if you bring your cattle with us, when we go on our raid into Ulster and go to get the brown bull of Cooley and you use the milk of your cattle to supply our army, well then... When we all return to Crocon, you may marry my daughter, Fenever. 
And with that, Freyk was satisfied. And he and Finnever parted ways with warm embraces and high hopes for the future. This podcast was produced and edited by Oisin Ryan. You can find out more about us on our website, candlelittales.ie. And we're on all the social media, so like and follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Candlelit Tales, or send us a message to get onto our mailing list. For more videos and live streams, like and subscribe to our Candlelit Tales YouTube channel, which now has a Candlelit Tales for Kids playlist, hashtag Candlelit Tales. Liking and subscribing to our channels really helps us grow and get to more people. And if you're able to give us more direct support, you can chip in a few bob at patreon.com forward slash candlelit tales or make a one-time donation through the PayPal button on our website. We also do really like to hear back from you with any questions, requests or comments, leave them in the section below. If you want to find out about our courses, anything like that, just drop us a line. And we especially appreciate you listening.